If you guys don't know, Shane Gillis is a comedian and he unfortunately was the victim of cancel culture back in 2019. So back then, he was going to join the SNL cast, but they fired him unceremoniously because clips resurfaced of him online saying jokes that were deemed too off color for their taste. This is their statement at the time. Lauren Michaels said, after talking with Shane Gillis, we've decided he will not be joining SNL. We, we were not aware of his prior remarks that have surfaced over the past few days. Okay, this, this the language is offensive, hurtful, and unacceptable. We're sorry we didn't see these clips earlier and that our vetting process was not up to standard. That's the problem here. Like, none of these places seem to have strong enough vetting, especially given the standards you hold yourself to and how utterly terrified you are of what people say about you. You should have unbelievably rigorous vetting now, processes. No, though. Processes? That this was back in 2019, and that was kind of when c cancel culture was in its infancy, or at least the term hadn't been as popularized as it is today. I actually remember like being in high school and trying to explain to my one of my teachers what cancel culture was with another student. Like a lot of people just had never heard the term before and it was still at its height. It was sort of like after the Me Too movement, the cancel culture and the Mean Too movement was at its height. So he was fired from the SNL cast because these clips got resurfaced by a bunch of crybabies. And uh, should we explain what he said? I watched a couple of these clips and he was imitating like Asian accents. He was making comments like um, he said, like, get those ducks out of that window. Uh, that's more annoying than any other minority playing music loud on their phone. Um, he was talking about how Chinatown disgusts him. And there were other jokes he made that were deemed ableist, homophobic. I've seen them reposted in the past few days. Well, now he's making a comeback. Shane Gillis is getting a career comeback because he just got a sponsorship with Bud Light. Really interesting yeah. that they offered him this sponsorship after the Dylan Mulvaney scandal. Yeah. So I saw Bud Light appears to be in desperation mode, partnering with right-leaning comedian Shane Gillis. What exactly Those qualifies words, him as right-leaning? Right-leaning is doing a lot of work in that sentence. Yeah. To assume that someone is right-leaning or politically right just because they made off-color jokes or comments at one point, it doesn't mean that they have those political views. It just means that he's a funny man. There is something hilarious about the idea that now to be anything other than rigidly part of the machine, you're yeah. considered right-leaning. I would say that I'm not right, uh, right-wing. Um, but I would be sl slant. Would slander be the right word there? I don't know if that's the right word for it. But I'm saying, like, for most celebrities, uh, there's plenty of celebrities who make jokes that are off color, but you don't just label them as such. Well, Shane Gillis is about as off color of a comedian you can be while still having leftist fans. Yes, that's how I would classify him. Gillis, who is a polar opposite from Dylan Mulvaney, is popular for his gay jokes and pro conservative takes. Which again, just Question means mark? not hyper leftist uh yeah let's show this clip of him from one of his specials it says uh this is one of his gay jokes that was deemed homophobic dude, through, the gayer the army the scarier forever dude throughout history think of any army throughout history imagine them gay <laughs> gay nazis <laughs> just when you thought those guys couldn't look any sharper they <laughs> <laughs> gay vikings Gay Vikings, dude. You're just some villager looking out on the shoreline. You see a bunch of Viking longships coming. You're like, oh no. It's the Vikings. They're gonna rape our wives and daughters. Then they pull up their fucking rainbow flag on their boat. And you're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, that's way worse. Dudes with Down syndrome love women so much that like i've never been a believer of being gay is a choice but i will say every dude i know that can't think fucking loves pussy <laughs> but there's a lot of people okay this last one is from his joe rogan oh, appearance that automatically will associate homosexuality with some kind of perversion for whatever unfortunate reason well it's because the reason is because it's guys fucking each other in the butt <laughs> <laughs> so that throws people off. that throws people
That was pretty funny. <laughs> also, York. he has a really good Trump impression. I'll give him that. I think it's the best Trump impression that I've ever heard. Um, and that was in the, the replies to that tweet. He seems, you know, pretty funny and pretty inoffensive. And I wouldn't, cr I would just like I wouldn't say Dave Chappelle is right leaning, and I wouldn't say Ricky Gervais yeah. is right leaning. Neither I wouldn't them. say Shane Gillis is right leaning. He's just a comedian who doesn't abide by certain standards of sensitivity for our modern audiences, yeah. which is fine. Um, but we don't need to immediately like it. Just gives me so much secondhand embarrassment when I see people on political right Twitter immediately try to stand someone who seems to not hate them, you know? Like finally, someone who doesn't always, you know, yeah. like show contempt for people who are right wing or isn't of avidly less leftist or whatever. Like you don't need to simp for someone and call them right leaning yeah. just because they made off color jokes that you thought were funny. Also those are the same He's doing what he's supposed to do as a comedian. Right? Most of them will also uh, tell you that you shouldn't worship celebrities, but the moment one celebrity agrees with them, they're like, I always liked that guy. Like the yeah. idea shouldn't be that. The, the idea is you should be able to talk about what that celebrity said. If you agree with it, great, but never hold the person above the idea ever because mm -hmm. the person can always let you down. Your ideals and your beliefs and what you think of the world at large, that usually stays pretty consistent uh, as you grow, right? Maybe some of your views change as you get into adulthood, uh, you, you grow, but the ideas will never let you down. The people will always let you down. Mm -hmm. As for Shane Gillis's Bud Light sponsorship, I just view this as another step they're taking to try to recover their brand mm -hmm. image with the people who used to support them, who boycotted them. Yeah. Um, just like the, uh, what was it? They they sponsored the UFC yeah. as well, which Dana White is obviously, he, he is right leaning. And that hasn't taken a hit as far as And then as they I can... did they did like an ad that was like showing a country music festival I feel or something. Like the, I feel like you, people thought the UFC was going to take a huge hit and it didn't. Yeah, but Bud Light did take yes. a hit and that was actually uh, a victory for the political right. It's just like, I don't know why you're suddenly claiming that Shane Gillis is on your side politically when he's just trying to do what comedians do, which is be funny. It is interesting to see him kind of like, I, I had to like, plumb the depths of my brain to remember this story all the way back in 2019 of him being hired at SNL and me being like, and you guys didn't do any research into this guy beforehand? Like, what is the hiring process like over there? Well, he actually talked about the hiring process when he talked about his cancellation on Joe Rogan. And I watched that clip. He basically said that you do a stand-up routine in front of the writers and Lorne Michaels, obviously. Yeah and you're not supposed to look at them, you're not supposed to make eye contact with them, and you're told that they're not going to laugh, they're not gonna to react to anything you say, and you just have to perform on the real stage as if there's a full audience there. Yeah. And that sounds incredibly difficult, but he made it through yeah. the callback process, and they obviously thought that he was funny. So I think that now, uh, Shane Gillis is doing, a, uh, Shane Gillis is hosting SNL, and this seems like a turning of the tide away from cancel culture because also, they were willing to admit defeat. Somebody reminded me in the chat. Yes, Nikki Haley ended up on Saturday Night Live this past week. Wait, the real, the real Nikki, Nikki, Nikki Haley. Haley. Yes. Oh, no. Yep, during the cold open. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. I see. This is why people don't watch SNL. Yes. And here's the here's the truth. SNL needs Shane Gillis more than Shane Gillis needs SNL at this point, which means it's sweet revenge, yep. right? But I, I'm still frustrated that SNL gets to have their cake and eat it too, essentially. So. They get to cancel Shane Gillis back when that was trendy. They get to throw him to the wolves back in 2019, and now they get to have him monologue, and that benefits them, not him. Yeah. So they get to have their cake well, and I mean, eat it that, too. That, that's the benefit of being the establishment. Right. That's the benefit of being the legacy. But for how much longer? Yeah. Well, I, People aren't watching SNL. I mean, they're going to have to eventually, they're talking about who they're going to have um, Tina Fey possibly take over SNL. Wow. Um, in the next couple of years, if possible. That would just be because they're still friendly. She's, I mean, she, could, she would probably do good. Doing yeah. that, she's uh, she's. I, I wouldn't say that she's like a she. She's a very big producer in Hollywood now, but she's got a lot of uh, credibility and a lot of history there. Mm -hmm. So, 
I think that a lot of people are hoping Shane Gillis will tear apart SNL in his monologue and kind of do what Dave Chappelle did, which uh, they said that Dave Chappelle gave them gave one. a fake monologue yeah. to the SNL writers and then did his own thing when they were live so they couldn't stop him. Maybe Shane Gillis will do something similar That's and gotta be scary make too. fun no, of them for canceling him. No practice beforehand. Like, you know, like no like on stage practice of that. that Someone like them. Dave Chappelle could do it easily, yeah. though. Yeah, and, and that is really interesting that you point that out too, right? Because Dave Chappelle gets instantly labeled as as right wing now because of his stance on trans issues, when that's we all know that that's not true. And mm -hmm. if you've watched any of his stand up, you know that. But it's almost like it's that it shows to you just how rigid their beliefs are. That you don't just have to agree with them on one box; you have to agree with them on literally every box, or you're this. Mm -hmm. There's no nuance to anyone. You either agree with us on every issue or you're an other. Right. And that's a depressing and annoying way to live. Like, I don't even like these ideas of having to label somebody as a comedian that is this or that. Like, we wouldn't have done this 20 years ago. The, the ridiculous nobody thing is have, like... Nobody would have sweated, like, nobody would have sweated whether George Carlin was left or right because he was anti-establishment. He was just a comedian who was good at his job. Why do we care what Shane Gillis's political opinions are. Why do we care what Dave Chappelle's political opinions are? Yeah. I don't. There's, I mean, that's not his job. Yep. Commenting on politics isn't his job. Making jokes about politics might be. Yeah, uh, in the chat, so he puts out uh, Dave Chappelle and J.K. Rowling have that in common. You, uh, they disagree with you on one topic, therefore you're othered forever. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. insane. But uh, as far as I know, Shane Gillis has literally never made a political statement. Yeah. in his career nor should he and i just think it's embarrassing to watch right wingers constantly flock around these public figures yeah. in pop culture like comedians or actors or whoever it is and hail them as like our guy or like jk rowling's our girl it's like no they're just a creative they're not a pundit and we don't want them to be that right yeah right like there wasn't that our whole mantra is that creatives in these industries shouldn't presume to be political pundits because they don't know what they're talking about yeah i don't know it's just uh kind of cringe to me i mean this is never i mean in the age of the internet though in the in the age of the internet though that is never going away because nobody can just leave it at the art anymore mm -hmm. now you have to then go look for their social media platform you have to go see what they're saying about this and that and to be fair jk rowling has done that right she's turned her creative endeavors into a very large platform in which she very much enjoys being a pundit of sorts on specific True. topics it's not like jk she rowling should host snl that would be hilarious thanks for watching listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.